<laughs> oh man, this quarantine has really helped me rediscover how fun Yu-Gi-Oh is. It's helped me discover how fun Yu-Gi-Oh is. No! Guys, I have terrible news. Zodiac's legal again. Would have held Colossus a little closer had I known it would turn like this. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. The dead speak. The metagame has heard a mysterious podcast, a threat of revenge in the sinister voice of one late Mommy Dryden't. That's right, Zoo's back. The greatest deck of all time now has one copy of their flagship monster, but without Broadbull, with only one barrage, and years of board building formats later, is it still viable? Let's find out. Presenting Zodiac. So here's the list, and ah, uh, looks just as good as I remember. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is a one-stop shop for deck building, deck uploading, card searching, and strategy articles, some of which are written by yours truly. I'm proud to represent them, and I encourage any player interested in deck building to check out their website at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now, let's assess these animals. Zodiac was the most powerful deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Coming to ultimate fruition after its second set of support, Maximum Crisis, this archetype was a, uh, Maximum Crisis for competitive play. With the unique ability to make Xyz monsters with one material, access to a utility extra deck at all points of the game, and easy rank 4 setups during the toolbox's most powerful, this archetype was soon the only thing worth playing. Konami danced around the obvious hits to the archetype for a few ban lists, hoping that MR5 would kneecap these Xyz reliant rapscallions, but when it didn't, they finally decided the dwindling player base had had enough and banned their searcher, Broadbull, and their removal monster, Dryden't, outright. The deck faded into obscurity as an occasional extra engine in Time Thief or bad Luna Light builds. Until now! The return of Dryden could not have come at a better time for these furry format destroyers. It's hard to overstate just how powerful the unlimiting of Pot of Avarice is for the archetype that puts six monsters into the graveyard without batting a furry eyelash, and though their best beast warrior is at one, they've got archetypal and recently unbanned mechanisms to put this mommy back again and again. The unlimit of one of the most powerful draw spells of all time isn't all that's brought to the zoo, however. It's also finally got a finisher. Like Sky Striker, this deck never needed a way to close out games, content to sit behind Dryden for as long as necessary, but Infinitrack Fortress Megaclops is an exceptionally accessible way to turn the corner. We'll be playing Zodiac as God intended, with 15 hand traps and no respect for our opponent whatsoever. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the Zoos. We're on 3 Thoroughblade, 3 Whiptail, 3 Ram Ram, and 1 Rat Peer. Thank god they didn't unlimit this Pete Buttigieg cosplayer. For hand traps, we're on 3 copies of Nibiru, 3 Ash, and 3 Ogre. For spells, we're on 3 Avarice, 3 Called By, 3 Tanky, the newly limited Barrage, a Foolish Burial, and a Monster Reborn for turn 1 Chalk and 9 setups. For traps, we're on 3 Combo. Since the archetype wasn't blessed with Broadbull, we need some way to ensure Whiptail's always a part of our 8 Mad Xyz, 3 Infip, and 3 Judgment. In the extra, we're on one Abyss Dweller, three Chalkanine, two Tire Mortar, and one apiece of Dryden't, Borbo, and Hammer Kong. For Lynx, we're on Boral Sword, Megaclops, Nightmares Unicorn, Phoenix and Cerberus, and Gravity Controller. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Ancient Gear, and get used to hands like this, they happen pretty frequently. Though we don't have any Zodiacs, I still feel pretty good about our chances, provided we don't get OTK'd. And when has Ancient Gear ever done anything like that? We're going to set a copy of Solemn Judgment and pass it back to our opponent. They're going to normal summon a box and special turbo booster before Link summoning a ballistic shooter and then specialing another turbo booster going into Platinum Gadget. We'll activate the effect and I figure now is as good a time as any to Nibiru. At least there's nothing pointing to its Link arrows. We'll draw for turn and another non-zoo. Okay, I'm giving up on keeping combo in hand for Thoroughblade. If we draw Thoroughblade, we draw Thoroughblade. Our opponent's going to go ahead and normal summon a copy of Wyvern. That is prime Solemn Judgment material before they pass it back to us. I'm trying not to get blown out by evenly matched, but as I draw Thoroughblade, of course I figure, well, it's time to start attacking. We'll overlay all the way 
away to Dryden't before attacking into this defense position token and piercing over for 16. We'll do directly for 3,000, and thank God, no evenly matched. Unfortunately, our opponent reveals they were holding a copy of Lightning Storm. They'll destroy our spell and traps. I'll activate Zodiac Combo in order to get a copy of Whiptail onto my Dryden't. They'll fusion into a Howitzer, and then at end step, we'll activate Dryden not to destroy the Howitzer, but to get a Chalconite in Graveyard for setups next turn. We're going to activate Tanky, what a rip, to find a copy of Rat Pier. We'll overlay for a copy of Chalconite, activate Chalconite's effect, bringing back the Borbo we just detached. The normal summon a Rat Pier, sending a combo to Graveyard to go to Tiger Mortar, so we can link summon Mega Clops. We'll combo right now, putting five of these bongos back in the extra deck before drawing a card, and then reborning a copy of Tiger Mortar so we can overlay for Borbo and Dryden. We'll go to Battle Phase, attack with the Howitzer. It'll go into a copy of Wyvern. Of course, it's going to resolve, but we can activate Dryden afterwards to destroy it and get in for 4,000 well over the... Did I forget to read something? Okay, well, our opponent's going to activate Urgent Schedule, and I'm kicking myself. Oh, I forgot to activate Combo. If I draw Ash off the top, I'm going to be so mad about this, and always, always always punished. Well, they'll go for Wyvern, we'll destroy it, and they'll concede. So, it's time for game two, and oh god, I'm so sorry. Well, at least we found a grand total of zero Zodiacs in our opener, so it's not going to be too embarrassing. We're going to set three cards and pass it back to our opponent. Again, I feel pretty good. Our hand is stacked. They're going to go into a copy of Magician Souls, sending an Apprentice Illusion Magician, my god. They'll go from Drone into Dagda, activating Dagda's effect off of the Foolish Burial Goods. We'll negate it, because I'm pretty sure I can't beat Scythe. They're going to send a copy of Rescue before getting in for 15, and then setting two of their own. For turn we draw... Another Ghost Ogre. Okay, it was always going to be the worst thing because they did activate Drone. They're going to try and activate it again by rescuing it back. I probably can't beat being Fate Sealed twice, so we'll go ahead and call by it. They'll Super Agent. I think they forgot what they put on top. And then Normal Summon it, yielding 15 and 19 directly. Okay, things are not looking great. We're going to have to start setting these hand traps. We'll set a copy of Solemn Judgment and one of these two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits. Unfortunately, our opponent probably knows what it is because they set it on top of our deck. They'll attack correctly and put us down to 16. Really, any zoo at all, and thank God we found one. I'll normal summon a Thoroughblade. They'll Utility Wire. We'll Solemn Judgment it. I really need this to resolve, guy. We'll go into a copy of Borbo and attack over this copy of Dagda. Next, we're going to overlay all the way to Dryden't and... Boy, does this feel good. All right, we'll activate the effect of Dryden, destroying our opponent's copy of Super Agent and passing it back. For turn, they draw... Oh, it doesn't matter. They're going to discard it for a copy of Twin Twister. We draw a card for turn. It's called by the Grave. We'll go to Battle Phase, attacking directly. They're going to activate Twin Twister on our card and their copy of Artifact Morale Tech. We're going to banish their copy of Super Agent. They'll activate Morale Tech, and joke's on you, I drew a copy of Called by the Grave off the top of my deck. We'll negate the effect and go for 16. Now I'm thinking about Mega Clops. We'll go Chalconine to bring one back, and... Oh no! We are out of Dryden. Okay, Chuck and I, you're going to have to bring this home. They're going to set one card and pass it back to us. It's a Foolish Burial. That's pretty good. We're going to Chalk and Iron to bring back an Xyz, and we're pretty close. We'll go to Tiger Mortar and activate Tiger Mortar's effect in order to attach something to the Hammer Kong, so it's on for next turn, and then we'll pass it back to our opponent. Of course, the Detach is an effect, so it's negated. They draw a copy of Magician Souls. So they'll activate the effect. I'll Ash Blossom the effect, and they'll Link Summon a copy of Link Haribo. Now, unfortunately, that does have more attack than our Hammer Kong has defense, but I'm still not too beat up about it, especially when I see a zoo off the top. We're going to Normal Ram Ram and go into our final Chalk and Iron, bringing back an Xyz monster, and from here we probably should just go into Mega Clops, uh, but I get a little spicy and just attack, triggering the Link Haribo and doing it in main phase two. I think that affords them an entire extra turn of play. They're going to set one card and pass it back to us. Fearing the worst, I Monster Reborn one of my opponent's monsters, thinking it might be called. Unfortunately, it is not called. <laughs> it's a card that punishes me for doing that, and now I can't activate the effect of Mega Clops either. Uh, my opponent's going to set two cards and pass it back to me. I think this is probably the end of the game. Ah, Whiptail seals it up. We'll go to Battle Phase, attack into this set monster, and then attack directly for Lethal. All right, so it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent is Giant Skyhawk, who recently won the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, playing the deck with which he won, Dino. Oh boy, this deck is projected to be extremely powerful in the upcoming format, but our opener is incredible. Finally, we found a zoo. We're going to normal summon a copy of Thoroughblade and activate its effect. We're going to Foolish Burial away a Ram Ram and then overlay all the way until Chalconine. We'll activate Chalconine's effect to bring back Hammer Kong. Next, we'll overlay for a copy of Tiger Mortar and use her effect to attach the Ram Ram in the graveyard to the Hammer Kong on field. We'll go into Dryden, set two, and pass. I'm feeling great about it. Our opponent's going to draw for turn, and they're going to lead with a copy of Pancratops. Of course, they can't destroy our monster, so they'll go for the back row. They're going to Fossil Dig for a copy of Overaptor, and that is worth a solemn judgment. 
Feeling great until I realize they have four monsters in the graveyard and can misc another one out. Of course, I can't destroy their monsters at this point in time because they're all under misc. Afterwards, they're going to overlay for a Dolko, which is just about effectively an FTK against me. They're going to Dragonic Diagram, then trigger a Baby Sarasaurus in graveyard for a Petite Tyranidon, followed by a Lithiosagum, banishing every good thing from my extra deck. They'll attack over every single one of our monsters, and in main phase two, I'll try to activate the effect of Nibiru, but of course it will be Dolkud. We'll combo, and I don't know what I'm looking for here, another Nibiru, that wouldn't even do it. At the very least something that is not infinite in permanence. They'll go into Mascarena and pass it back to us. For turn we draw, another trap card. We'll set two, and uh, and then go to game two. So it's time for game two, and I think I've got this matchup figured out. I want him to go first. Our hand, for the first time in this video, has too many zoos in it. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance. Ugh, nice to see in the opener, I suppose. Followed by a Foolish Burial, a Miscellaneous Source, an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, a Giant Rex, and two set cards. Well, it's less impressive than last time. For turn, we draw a Whiptail. We're going to activate Tanky. We'll Normal Summon a Thoroughblade, and we should be fine, provided they don't do... Exactly... Exactly that. Oh, God. We have the Called for the Baby Sarasaurus, but they have the Solemn Judgment for the Called. Must be nice! Next, we'll set a Solemn Judgment of our own after Overraptor adds Overraptor. Why is it allowed to do that? And we'll pass it back to them. For turn, they draw a copy of Foolish Burial Goods, which they will use to send a copy of Survival's End, popping our only piece of interaction. They'll normal summon a copy of Overraptor and add a copy of Miscellaneous Source to hand, which they will activate for two, getting a copy of Petit Pteranodon and a Giant Rex back to their side of the field. They'll overlay for Dolka, they'll Overraptor to destroy the Petit Pteranodon, then trigger its effect for a Miscellaneous Source, so they can overlay for Lagia. This is... Yeah, this is extremely the end of the game. We'd have to draw something immense off the top, and that is not it. We'll activate Tanky to get a copy of Ratpeer. We'll Normal Summon Ratpeer. They'll Lagia. We'll Foolish Burial and Concede. So we're back with the deck, and wow, this was historically a good zoo matchup, though the Danglong ban certainly did change the direction of Dino. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the setup is still as shockingly powerful as it was in 2017. It might be unclear to people without zoo experience, but assuming a pop and minimal protection is the extent of turn 1 setups is a recipe for a rude awakening. 2. Avarice is insane. Though it didn't feature in the games today, I assure you it's because every single person I avariced into Avarice against quit immediately and uninstalled Percy. And 3. Combo's on-field effect is a pretty good way to actually get Whiptail attached, and the deck certainly needs it. And the cons. 1. The format is almost completely foreign. When Zoo is at its peak, the quality of Boss Monster topped out at Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, and they have a much easier time dealing with one negate than Opelousa's four. 2. I hate to admit it, but the comments were right. Broadbull was the problem. Without consistent access to Whiptail, a free detach to set up Chalconine, and repeatable monsters ad nauseum, the deck seems completely beatable. And 3. It's very reliant on the quality of its surrounding cards. If Solomon and the four hand traps we're playing continue to be powerful, then it might see success, but that's a big if in an unknown format. All in all, Zodiac looks to be back in some capacity. Whether or not Avarice Turbo translates to widespread competitive success is still very much up in the air, but for now, I'm happy there's a future for these furries. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, Protagify, Tyler Slacks, Miko Reichman, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Dan the Man Hoban, Bleb, Like Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blast It, Burrito Man 93, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Filler Up, Meat Moto 27, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, and others. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.